Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn what is Resource Governor in SQL Server. We'll be taking an overview of uh, Resource Governor and we'll be talking about the components of Resource Governor in SQL Server, which is Resource Pool, Workload, and Classifications. We will also talk about governor, uh, Resource Governor limitations and Resource Governor advantages. So what exactly is Resource Governor in SQL Server? Resource Governor in SQL Server is a feature of SQL Server which enables us to basically control the physical resources of a SQL Server instance. When I talk about physical resources, uh, I'm talking about uh, CPU usage, I'm talking about memory usage, I'm talking about physical I.O. usage. So how Resource Governor basically does back behind the scene, it uses its components, which is resource pool. So what exactly is resource pool? I will give you an example that, uh, let's say that you have a SQL Server instance and multiple applications in your organization are connected with that SQL Server. So every application has a different set of uh, queries that comes in SQL Server and grab the data. So what resource pool does is each application, let's say there are four applications. So what resource pool is we create a resource pool for each application and basically when we create a resource pool we're limiting, we're controlling that how much uh, uh, physical resources of SQL Server instance this application uh, A can take or uh, application B can take and application C can take. So when we talk about how we distinguish the application A and application B. So we get the queries. Application A has similar queries, runs all day on a SQL Server. So we put those similar queries in workload. So that's where the workload comes in. And um, similar, um, that we can distinguish that from the different sessions and nature of those queries. And how we really do that, these three right here uh, the components they are interrelated they are dependent on each other so output of uh, uh, the work of one component becomes the input of other component and input uh, output of uh, this component becomes the output of input of this component so classification is where we basically find out that okay these uh, application a has these many sessions running and application a has basically uh, similar queries and classification is the one that helps us to find out that oh okay so these are the sessions that belongs to this application a and what we do is we create a workload called workload a so all the queries that application a is requesting we create a workload for that particular application and we call it uh, work workload a so class classification help us to find that okay this belongs to workload a so it will basically go ahead and put all those sessions all those requests that's coming from application a will put in workload a now as soon as the workload a goes resource pool we have already configured that uh, re uh, workload a should run under resource pool a so our uh, resource pool a will run the workload a and workload a will be fed from the classifications of uh, classic from the classification component so this is back behind the scene uh, uh, the resource governor basically uh, does its job so what are the limitations basically a quick overview uh, again as I said that um, resource governor the lip one of the limitation biggest limitation is that it is highly towards one SQL server instance and uh, you can it's it's just a SQL Server engine um, uh, component basically it's a SQL Server engine feature it will not apply on SSRS uh, resource governor cannot uh, um, enable uh, cannot limit the resources uh, SSRS resources analysis services resources which is SSAS and SSIS integration resources so the limitation is that is limited to SQL Server engine that's one limitation other limitation is that you cannot create one uh, resource governor and apply it to multiple SQL Server instance it is just for that particular instance the other um, other th limitation of um, resource governor is that it is really it works well only with user um, sessions uh, it does not work well with the you cannot control the system sessions system ses session would be in a SQL Server instance example would be when SQL Server try to uh, uh, SQL Server writes all the transactional log in 
uh, uh, transactional log of any database that cannot be limited using resource governor however when uh, application comes in and try to read the data from OLTP that would be uh, uh, that's where resource governor kicks in so the one of the limitation is that uh, it is only the for the user queries and there are a lot of advantages one I, I'll put uh, just say one one thing about resource governor that this is just a brilliant feature of who which gives us basically a control over physical resources of SQL Server. Now, how we use it, we will take a look. Um, you know, I'll put a, a different, you know, different uh, demos when we will configure resource pool, workload, classification, and we'll run a live demo of a different application connected to SQL Server and how it SQL Server uh, Resource Governor helps us to distinguish between the load and also um, in your organization you have seen probably there are uh, numerous applications that are uh, that takes a lot of uh, uh, physical resources of SQL Server instance uh, that means the other application has to wait when um, that is happening so it brings down the performance for other three applications let's say if there are four applications connected with SQL Server and uh, are reading the data from SQL Server so what it does it it gives us uh, ability to balance between um, the workloads between the applications that um, you know and also we can define like such application a is guaranteed to have these this this many resources of a SQL Server instance or uh, and it will work this way the performance of this application would be known and uh, we can set our SLAs uh, based on those known results. So these are the advantages. I'm going to quickly show you where the resource governor is and we'll just quickly take a look. This is uh, if you wanted to go to resource governor you're connected with SQL Server instance in my case is Tech Brothers client SQL Mirror. This is my SQL Server instance and in order to go and find resource governor you need to expand your um, instance and then go to management as soon as you expand the management you will see right here resource governor. Resource governor um, by default is disabled uh, in SQL Server instance you um, you need to enable it and um, basically uh, up here uh, when you install SQL Server the installation what it'll do is it creates two resource pools that's system resource pools anything that is not user defines in resource governor will be uh, either is a default system uh, resource pool or internal now, this cannot be modified these are system resource pools and they get created when you install SQL Server so um, we will see in much more detail how to do the resource pools how to create the resource pools how to create the workloads and all that in our next coming demos I just wanted to uh, let you know that uh, where resource governor is and what is its behavior when you first install SQL Server and I hope this video helps.